So the embargo for the OC models has finally lifted today and since we've seen this performance for the RTX 4070 FE, watch our other video for those benchmarks. Today, we are looking at the colorful GeForce RTX 4070 Advance. It's an overclocked version of the RTX 4070. We want to know how much more performance we can actually squeeze out and if it's worth paying the extra price for this. Let's begin. Now, a quick mention on the designs. Unlike the 4070FEs, the colorful 4070AD is big, like real big. It's equipped with a huge triple fan cooler which despite its observed description as seen on the official page, is actually well performed. Since the rated TDP is at about 200 watts, you'll still see some models come with these 12V high power connectors just like what we have right here. But there are models that come with an 8-pin PCIe that many of us are already using now, which is able to deliver 150 watts from the adapter and it will draw another 75 watts from the PCIe slots on the motherboard. We also find another buttons at the back of the display output area, which allows you to toggle between OC and normal mode, which I will recommend going OC mode because of the size of the cooler. And because of its size, Colorful did include a GPU stand together with other accessories to support the weight of this card when it's mounted horizontally. Before we look into the numbers, here are the list of specs we've used on our test bench just for your curious bunch. For a quick gauge, we've tested the card against the RTX 4070 FE and 3080 OC for a better idea of how much performance gain can we see on the factory overclock 4070. Now, since the 4070 is already a capable card when it comes to 4K gaming, but except for demanding titles like Cyberpunk and Watch Dogs Legions, we can see from these graphs right here, the overclock RTX 4070 AD can be as capable as a factory overclock 3080 when it comes to raster performance. That also means that the 3080 is still a very powerful card even today. 1440p resolution is obviously what Nvidia is pushing for this GPU, so we can easily see 100 FPS or more on most of the title tested with the 4070. For most of the time, we can see the 4070 AD performs better than the RTX 3080. There are some exceptions though, but differences are just not that significant. 1080p of course is never an issue for both the 3080 and 4070. But I can't see any reason for one to purchase these cards just to play games at 1080p. What is this bug? Up next is the ray tracing performance. The graphics settings used is the usual very high or ultra preset and DLSS quality preset. Thanks to DLSS, this overclock 4070 is still 4K gaming capable to a certain extent, with exceptions like Cyberpunk, Metro Exodus, and Watch Dog Legions, as it's proven too much for the 4070 to handle. In this case, I recommend switching the DLSS preset to performance or balance mode, as I think it's still reasonable for 4K gaming. You will be losing some details but it's hardly noticeable, especially in fast-paced games unless you intentionally pixel peeping. At 1440p, both cards still perform reasonably well, just as what we have observed on the raster performance test. Even titles like Cyberpunk is still able to run at 68 FPS on average, slightly higher than the 4070 FE. The same goes for 1080p as well, and we'll just show you a bunch of graphs right here. Now, the main advantage of getting an RTX 40 series card is because of DLSS. With NeoTex boost FPS like frame generation, we can see demanding games getting a huge boost in performance. With frame generation enabled, the RTX 4070 is still 4K gaming capable in a way if 
60 FPS is what you consider as playable smooth frame rate. 1440p is definitely what Nvidia is pushing for, the 4070p, and you can have your graphic settings and ray tracing set to the highest. There are many more games getting DLSS3 support by day. If you want to take advantage of the new feature, you have to get yourself the new RTX 40 series cards since it's unavailable in previous generation's GPU. Moving on to the synthetic benchmarks. For benchmarks that focus on game performance like 3 Mark and Unigine Superposition, the difference between the 4070 FE and 4070 AD isn't as big as what we initially expected when compared to the performance difference we've seen on the game's benchmark. I'm still curious to know how both the 4070 have lower scores than the 3080 at this point. Might be due to optimization, but this is what we're seeing now. Benchmark that focuses more on content creation tasks like Blender, Octane Bench, and V-Ray, on the other hand, is closer to what we've expected. And the 4070 AD is having a slight advantage here with its factory overclock settings. For the power draw, we can see that the 4070 is way better when it comes to power efficiency. Even the overclocked version only draw 15 watts more than the FE model, totaling up at about 217 watts only. The RTX 3080, on the other hand, peaked at 375 watt. Temperature-wise, due to the sheer size of the cooler, we're seeing an impressive 65 degrees Celsius max on the GPU low temperature and way lower temperature on the memory junctions and hotspot temperature. Okay, this is actually the first colorful card we've ever tested, but I'm really impressed by what they can really deliver. For colorful, for the colorful RTX 4070 AD, I'll say it's probably one of the best 4070 we've tested so far. The performance gain from the factory overclock settings is somewhat commendable and we're actually getting better performance in overall. What I really like about this card is actually the cooler. Like I said earlier, the card is massive. But the cooler is definitely doing its job and we can actually see better temps not only on the GPU load temperature but that means the fan don't have to work as hard to cool down the GPU too. Less fan movement means less dust getting sucked into the cooler and it also has less noise. We're not sure about the exact price for this at the moment but for starting price of 599 for the 4070 I'd say it's actually a fair price to pay for the performance and feature it can deliver for now. And that's all for this video. Do let us know your thoughts on the OC models and what's your take on it in the comment section down below and I'll see you all in the next one.